Mr. Happy Living here, and I'm happy to be broadcasting from WITV7 in the beautiful Queen City, Charlotte, North Carolina, USA. Hey, friends, will you come and join me just for a minute and imagine how amazing you'd feel living the unique and distinct life you were put on this planet to live, doing work you love, with people you love, in places you love, and all the while creating something of real value to others. That's what I call a life of significance. And I can tell you it makes for a very happy life. And so can Matt Rainey. He comes highly recommended by Bobby McLaughlin from episodes 114, 123, and 129. Matt's my guest star today, and he's here to share his unique and distinct journey to his life of significance. Hey, Matt, welcome to the show. So happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. Why don't you just get us started by telling us what you're doing these days to make your mark of significance on the world? Hmm. Well, I get the privilege of taking a soccer ball into rural Eswatini, which is in Southern Africa, the HIV capital of the world, and wow. travel into the rural parts of this country where orphans and vulnerable children live alone in their homesteads without the support of social systems and such. And I get to go in with a soccer ball and offer them hope through the silly game of soccer. That's amazing. Now, give our audience just a kind of an overview because I've, I've written down a few things here. You mm -hmm. have a sports ministry, an orphan feeding center, clean water project, community garden, orphan education, support, homestead visits, and chicken farming. That's all over there. And then here, you also have local missions, local outreach, and foster care outreaches in a soccer camp. So kind of piece those together for us in, with a couple of minutes, how you're doing the two different things in the two different countries. Absolutely. Well, the reality is, is my family, my wife and I especially, our hearts have been broken for children that are hurting. Mm -hmm. And um, the story as to how we got to Eswatini in Southern Africa is one that I'll share as our time together continues. But the reality is, is we get to go into these rural villages where these kids are living alone because there are only a handful of orphanages throughout this whole country. Uh, the country itself is the size of New Jersey, 1.2 million in population. And we get to go into these rural areas where these kids are that don't have support, don't have moms and dads, are vulnerable, are continuing the repeat of the cycle of poverty. And we get to go in first and foremost and play ball with them. And that's super fun in itself. If it stopped there, it would be fantastic. Yeah. But it's in that connection and in the forging of that relationship with these kids that we get to really dig into and get to the heart of what their real deeper needs are. And the needs of orphans living alone in rural areas are quite significant. That need, like you shared, of food or, or access to clean water, the need for education, the, the need to be able to learn things that we learn from our parents, like how do I grow vegetables? How do I sell those vegetables? Um, all of those little things can be taught through building relationships and connecting these kids to programs that set them up for breaking the cycle of poverty. And it really does offer them hope. And in the process, we get this beautiful opportunity to share values with them, to share hope through faith and opportunity and so that they can catch a glimpse of all the ways that God's at work in their lives, that he sees them, he loves them, and has a future for them. And if they can catch sight of that and hold of it, the cycle begins to break because they see themselves as empowered. And that is the most life-changing thing, is watching a child grab a hold of that and see that wow, my life is with purpose. I love that part of things. Um, we get to do that same thing here at home, uh, working in our hard hit communities, communities that have been hit by gang violence or drug, or especially in the foster care communities. And we use the same strategies here, the silly game of soccer to connect with kids 
and do values training with them and set them up to succeed. That's what we love. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. All right, Matt, let's do a little mathematics so our friends okay. all around the World Wide Web can get to know you through our happy formula. It's really okay. simple, but it's super powerful, and it goes like this. Power plus purpose equals happy. So mm. let's start with power. What are your personal practices for building mm. up the power you need to get things done, whether that's physically or mentally or financially, spiritually, emotionally? In other mm. words, Matt, what do you do on a regular basis to create all the power you need to take really good care of yourself and your loved ones and mm. still have plenty left over so you can be a giver to others? Mm. Mm. Well, my my formula is, is quite a simple one. Um, I spent decades and decades doing this on my own and finding myself um, in such a pit of failure and shame um, that I was desperate for a way out. And um, the burdens that I carried from the decisions that I had made uh, that literally walked me to a place where I had sabotaged my soccer playing career in college. I had sabotaged my education at university and really had sabotaged myself. Uh, when I was, was told of this fresh offer of an opportunity to be forgiven and made new in my in faith in Jesus, I jumped at it. I jumped at it and I sprinted towards it because I was, um, for the first time in my life, felt freed from those burdens. And in the process of that, um, my story began to unfold. What I wasn't capable of doing on my own, the very gifts and talents that I clearly was blessed with from a young age that I had used for my own purposes, my own ego, my own pride, my own need to feel significant, all of a sudden those same gifts and abilities became something significant that I felt like God wanted to use to connect with and reach the most vulnerable children with. So that's that's awesome. And just explain, give me, give us a minute or so on this idea that yeah. you're you're talking about spiritual energy, and yeah. that's not coming from you. That's coming from outside you, from God. And the other things I mentioned, physical, mental, financial, emotional, those are all earthly energy. Those are all where we do things on our own in quotes and those mm -hmm. are all finite when you use them you have to replace them but spiritual yeah. energy is infinite the more you use it the more you have of it so talk about the how your life went from using finite energy to using infinite energy when mm. that happened to you I really like how you put that. Let me let me do a, a bit of a word picture for everyone today. Um, I am no different than the very soccer balls I bring over to Africa. <laughs> I've been designed to be filled with one thing and one thing only. If I spend my time filling it with things that that ball is not designed to be filled with, the ball simply won't operate the way it's been designed to operate. <laughs> but the beauty is, is once each of us discover what we're designed to be filled with yeah. and we spend our time and our energy and our focus filling with that something beautiful happens not only do we change in physical appearance like the soccer ball does when you start to fill it but when that ball is pressed down and it's filled with the right things that ball does exactly what it was designed to do bounces back when I made that life change to filling myself with the study of the word of like God it. and filling myself with the right people around me and, and, and hearing and listening to the right things, learning to guard my heart from those things, I found that those low points, those times that were down, were, were small and insignificant because I was always bouncing back and bouncing back quickly because I was filled with the right things. Yeah. So I made that my focus. When I made that change, uh, I literally changed. Yeah. And yeah. then my purposes changed. My reasons for wanting to get out and make a difference in the world, they changed all because I made the decision to be filled with the right things. 
Yeah, so filling a soccer ball with diamonds or with your mm. reputation mm. or with these other earthly things that we desire for, the ball wouldn't work very well. No. No, we actually do this lesson, Matt. In in rural <laughs> Africa, we do it right here I'm in sure. Washington and Pacific Northwest, where we have four different balls sitting there, and it's a it's a time challenge for the kids, and they have to go in. One fills it with dirt and rocks and sand. Another gets filled with plastic trash bags. Um, another they fill up with a hole. They fill up with a with water, and then there's yeah. one where they have to fill it up with what it was designed to be filled with. All the balls look inflated, but they yeah. all behave very differently. Yeah. And it's a way to show these kids that, that we are no different than these balls. We've been designed to be filled with something. And when we spend our time and our energy filling with the right things, the ball will behave as it was designed to. But, oh, it's hilarious when you throw that ball filled with water on the ground and the yeah. water splashes everywhere or or the child tries to kick the ball filled with stones. It, it, it doesn't behave correctly. Yeah. And so the kids begin to start seeing that, okay, wait a minute. This is, I've been designed for something. What would my life look like if I started filling myself that way, like Coach is saying? Yeah, I love that. That's fantastic. All right, Matt, let's dive into one of my favorite power generating concepts. It's called a Kaizen state of mind. Mm. And it's this beautiful Japanese idea that small incremental improvements add up over time to yield great mm. big results. And I love mm. it because it's based on mindset, not circumstance. Kaizen in life is knowing there's always something I can do better tomorrow than today. And mm. it creates an optimistic, gentle, but a powerful and continuous uplifting of my life day mm. after day after day so mm. matt how does kaizen in your life or maybe kaizen in the life of the of the kids that you work with how does kaizen in your life help increase your power to continuously mm. become more so you can continuously give more oh wow this is such a custom fit question for for our our efforts right here at first i I, I never want to pretend that I have it all figured out, that my eyes are constantly being opened to fresh new needs. Uh, we set foot on the ground right after the World Cup in South Africa in 2010, mm -hmm. feeling really called to this specific area in Eswatini, formerly Swaziland. And we went in, marched in with our soccer balls to make this difference. And my wife says to me, we can't send these kids home on empty bellies. Look at the hundreds, if not thousands of kids that are here. Then all of a sudden our ministry and outreach added food support. And then we watched kids trekking kilometers down to the river to fill their bellies with water after running around for hours with us. And we recognized, hold on a second, water has to become a component to this. And so it continued baby steps one after another, just as you've described to a place where we have this support wheel. And the support wheel involves everything from food, water, gardening, preschool, education, uh, even starting businesses in this in these rural areas. We've got 60% unemployment rate in this country where young people cannot find jobs. Well, we're seeing chicken farmers, pig farmers, welders, sewing experts. We're seeing people now emerge out of this as opportunities and open doors are given to them. They walk right through them. So baby steps, baby steps. Never pretend like I have it all figured out. And I'm always, my head's on a swivel, looking for the next way that we might be able to add to that support wheel. Yeah, that's great. Great. Okay, let's explore purpose. That's our second element of the happy formula. And mm. Matt, I've observed that major life transformations, that that big discovery of purpose so often comes from devastation, addiction, mm. abuse, disease, mm. death, disaster, something awful, strips a life to its core, resulting in some big change. However, mm. in my book, Turning Inspiration into Action, I share the transformational process that I've used to discover the purpose of my life using inspiration. So how mm. about you, Matt? Was there a specific moment or event or crisis or inspiration that revealed to you the God-given purpose you were meant to live? Oh, boy. My story is um, its one that I, I keep um, to myself. Um, 
um, for uh, and reserve sharing it for special moments of impact. Um, I, I'm a complete failure in my most um, impactful um, and purposeful times before I hit my rock bottom. I was chasing after something that I thought was for me only to find myself um, filling myself with drugs and alcohol and mm. pornography in a way that literally had ruined my life. And it walked me to such a pit where I was ready. I was ready. So I relate to that. Um, but the inspiration for me came from a series of dreams that I had, Matt, and those mm. dreams were very significant to me. I had made a decision to start refilling myself with the right things and, and, and made that decision that I wanted to be a follower of Jesus and learn and grow in that way. In these dreams, I saw myself standing and teaching kids. And I was, I was, I was, had a soccer ball. And, and the reality of that was, is it wasn't a strange thing for me to dream about because I grew up, my father coached me and, and I was around the game. I played my whole life, but because of that pit that I was in, I had given up all of that. We had, my wife and I had two sons already at this point and they weren't playing ball because for me, it represented that dark place for me that pit of shame that i never wanted to i wanted to move on from but i never wanted to revisit again and soccer represented that for me in these dreams i found myself sharing using a soccer ball but the strange thing to me is as i looked out in this dream i, I saw a sea of what i described to my wife a sea of black faces and huh. and, and and it was such a strange thing it actually scared me and night after night, it was like somebody was hitting the pause button on this story. The story began to come to light with colors, colors on this wall. And, and our soccer camps we run now have a big red wall that has a shooting target with holes in it. That was right out of my dreams. And then one day it hit me as we were we were considering and praying about where I get this email. And the email was an invitation to tiny little Eswatini Africa that they had heard about us and what we were doing and what, what God was doing through the game. And that this person as well was having dreams and I was in them, but I was so crippled by fear. I couldn't go because I'd never traveled out of the U S and I, I couldn't get over that fear until this strange peace that I had never experienced, this tug on my heart to go began to manifest itself. And my wife was already out the door. She was ready to go, but not me. I was not going to go. So help us understand you, you got into the pit yeah. and the pit was drugs and alcohol and pornography. And was that like in, in your college years? Yes. Yeah. And and then you started climbing out of the pit. What was help us put the pieces of the puzzle together? What turned you around and decided to to get out of the pit? And then how long from then climbing out till you had these dreams? Was that mm -hmm. months? Was that years? Mm -hmm. Kind of fill that in so we can understand. Because yeah. what I want people to what what happens is when you get in the pit, you can probably attest to it. You just are totally overwhelmed. And you yeah. can't imagine climbing out. You wouldn't know what to do if you did get out. And you don't know if you had the energy. So how did you how did you manifest the change? And then when did the dream start coming and mm. and the and the picture that you are now living start to be pieced together? Mm. I was pursued. I was pursued by someone who loved me, who knew that I needed to be made new and fresh. And they saw potential in me. This person whom I love so much, who's, who's passed away now, his name was Nelson. And I had the privilege of calling him my father-in-law. Mm -hmm. And he was such a significant role because he pursued me. This man invited me to come for a friend day at the church, um, probably 50 times to my <laughs> declining. And I thought to myself, how do they have so many friend days at this church? 
but he wanted so desperately for me to hear this um this ability that I could be forgiven for what I'd done because he understood the weight of that. I had had dropped out of college over these things and was just surviving and getting by. There was no bounce back. Mm -hmm. But when I heard this message shared with me, I, I, I wanted it so bad, but I was so embarrassed as to who I was. And the shame was so real to me. It was like I was carrying around a backpack with stones. Mm -hmm. And they began to show me how I could take those stones out and put them at the foot of the cross. Mm -hmm. And that happened from 2001 to 2003, where I learned to take those stones out and not carry them around anymore. And then those dreams happened okay. and I shared those dreams with someone at that church. And they said to me, we got to write this down. And they began to write down everything. And we started a soccer camp based upon all these things that I was dreaming about. And they said, I don't think Matt, that Matt, how long, how long were the dreams? Were, are we talking days, weeks, months? No, this this all unfolded in a, in a matter of a week. It was okay. night after night for a okay. week. Wow. And then I, I suppressed them. I shared only with my wife. And then I made the mistake, <laughs> which was the greatest mistake I've ever made uh, of telling someone outside of my wife. And they said, I, I believe God's given you a, a, a template for how he wants to use you. Wow. But I was so, so afraid of that. For the next six years, from 2003 to 2009, we worked out the bugs of what this soccer camp looked like and traveled around the Pacific Northwest, and everybody thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. We were teaching kids. It was so popular. It was raising all these funds that we were able to give and support charitable work with, and the burden became so great that I, I, I couldn't deal with it anymore. And I went to another trusted friend who served in uh, Spain to the gypsy population in Spain. Oh. And he, I said to him, Miguel, how, how can I tell the difference between, um, people use this word calling, and how do I tell the difference between a good idea that helps people and a calling, something that a, the higher power, God, is calling you to. How do you tell the difference? They're both good, but how do you tell the difference? And he said to me, turn and walk away. And that same pursuit that Nelson had on you, God won't let it go if he's calling you to it. And boy, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't listen to a song. I couldn't read a book. I couldn't read quotes. I couldn't watch the television without being in tears. I was broken, Matt. Hmm. And it was finally time to respond. So in January of 2010, we responded. We left our family with Nelson and grandma, and we left to search and seek if Eswatini was something God was calling us to. Well, and then that picture um, that uh, of my sharing with those kids, I didn't know it was taken, but it came to my attention and I said, oh my goodness, that was my dream. Hmm. And I knew amongst many other confirmations that this was for me. That's the picture you shared with us. Yeah. Oh, uh, we'll, we'll put that in the show notes or it'll be in this video. Um, that's awesome, Matt. Thank you so mm. much for sharing that. Let's take a quick commercial break so our sponsor yeah. can spread a little love with our audience. Mr. Happy Living here. I love good things made for good people. That's why I love Happy Living's online e-course. It's an eight week long deep dive into you and the inspired life you want to live. The life you were put here on this earth to live. The one that you and only you can live. Eight weeks of lectures and ideas and topics and supporting materials and powerful self-improvement tools. 
all designed for you. All designed to help you create the tools and the power and the confidence you need to discover your purpose and to discover the life you were meant to live and to feel incredibly inspired and motivated to decide you will live your life to its fullest. It's all designed to help you create the unique and distinct philosophy of you and your inspired life. Go to happyliving.com, select our e-course, and save 100 bucks with promo code WITV7. And for every enrollment, I'll donate another 100 bucks to WITV7. For $300 in about 30 hours, I promise you'll never, ever be the same again. And we're back, and this is the Something Significant Show, and I'm your host, Matt Gersper. And my special guest star today is Matt Rainey. He's the founder and executive director of Adventure Soccer, what he began more than 20 years ago as a small soccer club serving the people of his community in Snohomish, Washington, mm -hmm. has since grown into a multinational nonprofit serving orphans and, win and widows all around the world and bringing them life with the hope of Jesus Christ. Oh, mm. Matt, I just love that. Mm. And I think, I think you're going to love this article called The Science Behind the Power of Giving. It mm. says that the act of giving itself can be a gateway for discovering your reason for being on the planet. It says that science tells us that giving our time and talents and treasures is a powerful pathway for discovering purpose and overcoming difficulties and finding fulfillment and meaning in life. So I went and updated our formula. Power plus purpose plus giving equals really happy. So what do you think, Matt? Has giving mm -hmm. your time and your talents and your treasure mm -hmm. been a pathway for discovering your purpose and for getting past difficulties that you've faced mm -hmm. and for bringing real meaning into your life? Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, I tell you what, every time I turn around, um, I, 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 ref I'm, I'm, I find myself reflecting on this is a better, better way to put this. Um, the mindset that I'm giving um, something significant really isn't my focal point. Um, I recognize completely the privilege that I get to be able to do what I get to do, whether that's locally in my community or globally in Southern Africa, this is a privilege. And whatever investment or giving that I've poured into this and my family has invested, what we have received is 10, 20, 100 times more. It has changed the fabric of my own family unit, yeah. it, it, the purpose has changed the dynamics of my marriage and relationship with my wife. It, it's, it's given purpose. We just hosted a local soccer camp and the local high school boys soccer team volunteered at it. Yeah. <laughs> it's that opportunity. I just consider this such a privilege. So your formula is, is spot on. It, it, the, 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 the power is wrapped up in the purpose and that purpose and power together, the happiness that comes from that, the joy that comes out of that as I reflect on these moments, it, it's overwhelming the joy where at times I not only pinch myself and go, is this really happening? But I find myself overwhelmed and humbled by this opportunity that I get. Well, that's, and you, you said it, the power is wrapped up in the purpose. And so the science tells us that when we're giving to others, that helps bring real meaning to our life, as you're talking about real joy. And the joy that comes from the fourth element of significance, doing work that creates value for others, confirms it. You get joy. You're, descri you're, you're, you're radiating it as you're telling us that. Yeah. But there's something more to it than just the giving. And mm. you, you mentioned it. I believe the real magic of life comes when you're giving from living in your purpose. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. where the magic is. So Matt, mm -hmm. the audience and I would like to experience how it makes you feel to be happily living your life and giving to others 
through the work that God put you on this planet to do. Mm. And the people all around you have taken notice. So mm. my friend, just sit back, open your heart and have a listen to what people are saying about the impact that you're making on their lives mm. by finding the magic of giving from living in your purpose. Mm. One person said, Matt is the Billy Graham of soccer, using mm. his creative talents to share the gospel wherever he, and in parentheses, wherever he and his family goes. Another mm. said, Matt's relentless love and support for orphans and vulnerable families is admirable. Another said, we love the dedication of adventure soccer staff. Our son loves your camps. Hmm. Others said, Matt grew up in a legendary soccer family. The entire Rainey family were soccer sensations, including his dad, Pat. Matt was a very capable player that heeded the call of God to do mission work in Africa. Hmm. He's action oriented, generous, resourceful, humble, playful, loving joyful, faithful, a blessing to those here and across the globe. Mm. He's remarkable. Kindness is the essence of his character. Mm. His vision and passion for sharing the gospel is unequaled. I'm thankful for his dedication to sharing the truth of Jesus. And finally, this person said, he is truly an inspiration and embodies the life of a servant of Christ. Mm. So Matt, how does all that incredible love make you feel? Mm. I don't see myself as anything but saved and obedient. This is all a privilege to me. This is all a privilege. I, I don't deserve any of this. I think I've cashed in on grace um, more than my allotted amount. I may have robbed some of yours or others, um, but I, I'm, I'm overwhelmed and in awe in the middle of all of this that God can turn trash into treasure, mm -hmm. all of the garbage, all of the trouble that I've stirred up, all the things that these kids and others have encountered. There's no promise of those things never um, coming around. In fact, the, the opposite is stated that the world's going to be full of trouble. But the beauty of this is that trash, that garbage can be turned into treasure. And I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen it with lives changing. I've seen it as little kids in Africa pick up pieces of garbage wire on the side of the road and they begin to make something out of it. It's it's beautiful. I've seen where people should have been down with the knockout punch, but instead hope comes alive in them and they find their purpose. And in the midst of that purpose, there's power. And out of that comes this joy and happiness that is contagious. <sighs> that's, that's it. And that, as you've just said it, that's what this show is all about. It's finding that magic in each of our lives. And it's available for each of us. That's what I believe. And it mm -hmm. comes from this great big happy circle. Giving your time and talents and treasures is a powerful pathway to discovering your purpose hmm. and giving from living in your purpose brings a profound joy to your life, but mm -hmm. also to the lives of those around you. Mm -hmm. It seems that giving leads to purpose and giving from purpose leads to joy. So to capture the full exponential power of our happy formula, Matt, I've got to tweak it just a tiny bit more to power times purpose times giving equals happy to the third power and that's really, mm -hmm. truly, deeply happy. Does that sound about right mm -hmm. to you? I like that. I like that a lot. Very yeah. good. Very good. Let's wrap things up with the lightning round. I love the power of words and the capacity for great quotes to change lives. Mm. So I'm going to read a few of my favorites and have you have you tell us what they mean to you and give us the first thing that comes to your mind because we call this a lightning round. Okay. Here we go. From Richard Branson. If someone offers you an amazing opportunity, but you're not sure that you can do it, say yes, then learn how to do it later. Mm, it's okay to fail. What's not okay is to not to try. Yeah. From Lionel Massey, I start early and I stay late day after day, year after year. It took me 17 years and 114 days to become an overnight success. 
Mm, okay, I'm a soccer guy, so that's Lionel Messi. Yes. And Lionel Messi is a very significant ball player. Um, here's what I have to think about that. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you my faith if you want to hear it, but if you don't want to hear it, I'll show you my faith by what I do. And you know what? That's the commitment Lionel Messi had on the pitch. Um, like he was that. the first to get there, the last to leave. He showed everybody how serious he was about football. Yeah, right on, right on. You said football. Uh, we call it football in <laughs> Africa, soccer here in the States. Yes. All right. From Albert Einstein, coincidence is God's way of remaining anonymous. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Um, uh, we get little indicators, Matt, that we're on the right path, which is a, it, it, it's, it's necessary because that means we're moving. We need to be people of action. And because we're okay pivoting and moving, uh, the, the reality is, is we've got to be in motion in order to pivot and react. So I love, I love that. Um, we can be moving in a direction and figure out the details while we're moving. Yeah. This is from Eric Weinmeyer. He's hmm. the first blind person to summit Mount Everest. And he said, wow. sometimes that fear of reaching out into the unknown paralyzes people to the point they decide not to reach out at all. He continues, for me, all the great things that have ever come to me have come through reaching out into that unknown. Hmm. My very first journal entry when I hit the ground on the continent of Africa was fear, fear, fear. And someone shared with me, you know, fear is not from God. Mm. What are you being kept from? Push through that, push through that. And I'm so, so thankful that I did. And I'm so thankful he did and was able to summit that mountain as well. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. This is an, an African proverb. It says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Mm. Well, that's one thing I've learned amongst many in this culture in the African continent is Africans have nothing but time. They're so relational in everything they do. And you know what? They confirm the very scriptures that I cling to, that uh, a cord of three strands is not easily broken. Pity the person who's all alone. But a friend not only can love at all times, but a friend can help you up. We need each other. We've been wired to be uh, with each other and do life with each other. And you know what? We're better doing it together. So yeah. I agree. Yeah. This is from Proverbs chapter three, verse five. Trust mm. in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Mm -hmm. I've spent decades leaning on myself. And you know what? I don't trust myself to that degree anymore. I know exactly, I've figured out exactly who to lean on. I lean on Jesus, and he's big enough and strong enough uh, to carry and hold all of us. That's awesome. And then maybe you can tell us who said this one and what it means to you. The miracles we pray and wait uh, on God to do for us, he might be hmm. trying to do through us. Hmm. That's my motto, Matt. Um, a dear friend of mine who's passed away, Josh, invited me to come down. And um, I don't even know who the speaker was, but they said it. I wrote it down. And that was pivotal in my overcoming that fear. That I was praying that God would go help these kids that my heart was broken for. Until I realized that the very things that I was praying and waiting on God to do for me, God might just want to do through me. Mm. Mm. that's awesome yeah. so this is our show anchor it's from Goff he said whatever you can do or dream you can do begin it boldness has genius power and magic in it begin it now yeah I think uh, you're never too old you're never too young um, if there's a, a calling written on your heart start moving today then that might be across the street. It might be in your neighborhood. It might be in your community. It might be across the globe, but there's nothing to fear. Get your feet moving. 
Yeah, right on. Right on. Okay, now, folks, it's your chance to be a giver, too. If you can hear my voice and you are inspired by today's show with Matt Rainey, won't you please share a little love with our wonderful broadcast team by giving what you can to WITV7. They're a 501c3 charity on a mission to educate, empower, and encourage. They do good works with your kindness. Mm. Matt, I love your fierce dedication to engage with orphans and other vulnerable people here at home and also in Eswatini. Did I say that right? Mm -hmm. Eswatini, Africa, using soccer to build relationships and begin the process of addressing their deeper physical, mental, and spiritual needs. Mm -hmm. And I admire your mission to bring the message of hope in Jesus to people in need around the world, leaving them forever changed. Mm -hmm. And I'm super happy that you've shared your encouraging, enthusiastic, and God-loving spirit on our show today. Will you please take a minute or two and share any parting remarks you'd like to leave with our audience? Hmm. Well, my life's been changed by the opportunities I've been given. I won't soon forget a child carrying a child on her back. She must have been eight years old with a baby on her back and walked up um, and they walked up for a meal at our feeding center that we had just built in one of the villages. And then a little sister in between the two of them uh, scurried to her side. And this, this significant moment for me um, made a mark that I'll never forget because the little girl that came up, um, this was the picture of an orphan-led homestead. And this little girl was chewing on something that turned out to be a rusty bolt she had chewed back her fingernails to, to where there was nothing but flesh remaining. And all that was there was this rusty bolt. And in this moment, this beautiful moment, it branded in my mind that, you know what? I've been sent to do something about this. And I get to bring along people around me that have giving hearts and loving hearts and compassionate hearts to join with me and partner with me to make an impact in the lives of kids like this. And as we coped, coaxed this, my wife coaxed this rusty bolt out of her, her clutch of her hands and her nervousness and anxiety, all we could say all I heard my wife say to her was, Jesus loves you. Uh, he sees you. He sees you, sweetie. You don't have to do this anymore. We're helping. We're here to help. And you know what? I stand by that commitment. And it's what inspires me to keep pressing through the hardest valleys and the toughest times, the financial challenges or the life challenges, things that come along, those moments carry me and push me to continue yeah that's that's great thank you matt and i also want to thank witv7 for hosting and promoting our show so we can keep interviewing inspiring guest stars like matt and reaching folks just like you ready to create your own extraordinary lives and most especially thank you viewers and listeners you'll find links to social media and all things matt rainey find him friend him Read about, pray about, donate, and volunteer to support the important work Adventure Soccer is doing all around the world, bringing people in need the message of hope in Jesus. You'll mm. find all of it in our show notes. From me to you, dear friends, I love you, and I want you to be really, truly, deeply happy, too. So go to happyliving.com right now and take our happy quiz, because measuring your happy helps you focus your attention on it, and focusing attention on it attracts change and learning and improvement all to flow right into your life. And once yeah. you take the quiz, and it only takes a minute, then give some thought about what we can do together, you and me, to improve the happy of your world, one person at a time. Until next time, I'm Matt Gersper. You are awesome. And this is The Something Significant Show. And we're out.